والعلاج تقدمها دكتورة ميري لو جيبسن الرئيس التنفيذي لمؤسسة أوبن واتر للابتكارات الطبية Hello. Thank you for having me. It's my first time at the Future Forum. Imagine if the world of healthcare, diagnostics, and therapeutics could be transformed the way semiconductors and software have literally transformed everything else. I believe that future is very close through advancements in consumer electronics, silicon device physics, and artificial intelligence coming together. This future could enable the profound act of curing a disease to become a reality for all, transforming the course of human health for all of us. It's not a dream. We are starting to revolutionize our ability to diagnose and treat a series of diseases from aggressive cancers to mental disease to debilitating stroke. And I'm going to share that with you today and hopefully take you on this path with me. This is a tale of two stroke patients. Stroke is the number two killer in the world. It takes 6.5 million lives each and every year. It's a time to diagnosis crisis. Even for the most severe strokes, if we can get you from stroke onset to treatment within two hours, the outcomes are excellent. But it often takes more than 10 hours to just diagnose the stroke. This patient on the left, If he lives, he may never go home again. And in contrast, the patient on the right had exactly the same type of stroke. The difference was he had rapid diagnosis and treatment within that two-hour window and is playing tennis the next week. We need to make this the new normal for healthcare. But rapid diagnosis isn't everything. You can be diagnosed with a disease and still die from it, like glioblastoma. It's a form of cancer with a 100% fatality rate. It's a death sentence. Imagine a cure for this, too. What we're trying to do, what we're all trying to do, is make healthcare better, more accessible, And what I'm trying to do is use semiconductors and consumer electronics to improve treatment inside the hospital and outside the hospital for everyone, everywhere, all of the time. So you've all heard about AI doctors coming along and they're going to revolutionize everything. I think that's terrific. They're really good. ChatGPT sort of brings us there beyond it with subsequent generations, arguably, as we're discussing here. But new devices and new semiconductor chips, cutting edge ones using the latest fabs, can enable better diagnosis and treatment for all. It's treatments with the semiconductor devices. So here's the thing. I, I live in a country where healthcare is approaching 25% of our economy today. And I'm a pioneer in silicon and TVs and screens and chips and laptops. And we have achieved a 10x cost reduction over the last 10 years. You put that together, we can make really innovative, and it didn't stand still. The devices you used 20 years ago are not the same as the devices you're using today. So what we need to do is harness Moore's law and see how we can use it to change outcomes. So, At Open Water, we're exploring this, building wearables like this. And today, I'm going to announce two things for the first time. One are extraordinary clinical results on addressing and treating aggressive cancers, mental diseases, and debilitating stroke. And two, two, a way to open the tech up more widely now to accelerate our collective goals to make healthcare better, faster, cheaper. 
So as a background, I'm a hard tech pioneer, globally lauded. I held very high executive positions at Google, Facebook, Intel, Oculus. I've founded four hard tech startups. I say this because what I'm sounding, what I'm saying, probably sounds impossible, but everything's impossible before you do it. I've done the impossible many times in my career. One of my startups was a not multi-billion not-for-profit where I architected the fastest growing consumer electronic category ever recorded. I've got 250 patents to my name. I've shipped 60 different devices, several of them multi-billion dollar devices. I was a professor at MIT, but perhaps more importantly or equally importantly, I'm a brain tumor survivor. It took 17 years to diagnose my brain tumor. I was very sick. And for the last 28 years since my neurosurgery, I need a dozen medications every day to live. I live the problem of healthcare. I fight for my very life on a routine basis through our broken healthcare systems. So it's not just about me. I've built this fantastic team. It's always about the team. Here are the leaders of various groups at Open Water. And there's more pics of the astonishing people that work in the groups underneath them that I can also share. So our idea, a semi-based platform approach to medicine with a worldwide innovation platform addressing 90% of the diseases that kill us. So here's a contrast in innovation, a modern drug and the modern smartphone. Each took billions of years and decades to develop. What's different is the per unit cost. This new drug, it's amazing. It cures hemophilia in one shot. And that injection costs you $3 million. Contrast that with the modern smartphone that went for scale fast, $1,000 a unit. So what I'm talking about is the natural proge pro progression of of the devices we've created with the step counters and the sleep trackers, but a step change in the next iteration of silicon that we can use there, meaning silicon and software replace drugs. Really. This step change is what we're doing, and I'll share some results with you today. We use infrared light and ultrasound to penetrate our body. That's been known for a long time. It's been used in therapies and diagnosis for 100 years. What's new is we're modulating the waves in the wavelength of light and sound. We've been designing and iterating a new set of devices and chips for the last seven years with new kinds of lasers where we can create interference patterns and record holograms of your body, where we can steer and control uh, uh, sonification parameters of ultrasound that have not been possible before that allow us to get to new places in the therapy. So let me talk a little bit about that. The last seven years of open water, this journey I started seven years ago, can be rolled up in a single slide, this slide. Let's start on the left, stroke, debilitating stroke. We've proven that we can diagnose that severe stroke in an ambulance. We've been in studies at University of Pennsylvania and Brown University for over a year measuring stroke patients to see if we can diagnose that stroke faster than 10 hours. We're doing it with the highest sensitivity and specificity ever recorded in a mobile device. We're applying for a CE clearance in Europe. This could be on the streets of Europe next year. We hope. Let's go to the right, glioblastoma, same device. Here, um, we do a 10-minute treatment on day one of ultrasound on the mice that have glioblastoma, human glioblastoma. It's at a very low intensity, at a lower level than has been used on pregnant women and their fetuses for the last 50 years. So, with that, we get a massive reduction in tumor size. How do we do that? 
Prior to this, we built up thousands of human brain organoids and ran through sweeps of sonification parameters to figure out which sonification parameters would kill the cancer and not harm the healthy tissue. Unlike most forms of cancer treatment, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, where they harm the cancer, but they also harm the healthy cells, we're not doing that here. We probably need another dose on day five to shrink the tumor even better, but these mice have now been through autopsy. They've come out. The autopsy people say, look, no damage to the healthy tissue, but we have uh, massively shrunk the tumor with a diagnostic level of ultrasound achieving a therapeutic result. And that same device at a different frequency we're using in a trial that's about to be finished at University of Arizona. And with this, what we're doing is turning off overfiring neurons. The root cause of mental disease may be many things. Mothers are often blamed. But the end result is neurons are either overfiring or underfiring. And we can see that in the default mode network here for ruminative negative thought, and we quell those neurons. Over half of our patients have gone into remission in this first study, which is better than most drugs. So we're continuing on that. In summary, we could make this outcome the new norm in stroke, number two killer in the world. Our clinical results on glioblastoma are amazing, and I'll show you how the same units could be tested on all aggressive cancers. And with the same device, we could change the game on mental disease and on addictions with at-home non-drug treatments. So this isn't a sleep tracker or a step counter with a digital therapeutic on it. Let me show you how it works. In glioblastoma, the main problem is those orange cancer cells hide out amid healthy neurons. And so the surgeon can't take all the neurons out or you don't have a brain. But they have different mechanical properties. And we can exploit those uh, mechanical properties like an opera singer can ping this wine glass, figure out the note, sing it, and burst that wine glass and harm nothing else in the room. We're doing that with our sonification parameter sweeps, and we're able to tickle those cancer cells and not affect the other cells. These cancer cells, they're rickety ships. They can't take it. They compress and expand until they burst apart. And when they do, they release proteins that vaccinate your body against the very cancer you have. It's amazing. We also craft these sound waves. And um, by delaying the phase of the wave from emitter to emitter, we can steer the sound near or far, right and left, and focus it however we wish to, to reach any place in the body or brain we wish to. We can also, by shifting the frequency, as I've shown, do that to uh, turn on and off neurons. So we're doing that in humans now with no drugs treating the severe depression, as I said. In a different module, we use a laser that we've developed. We spent many years making this laser. It has extraordinary properties of coherence and pulse and uh, the quality of the, of the light. But what happens with infrared light is it scatters everywhere. You stand by the fire, you feel the heat, right? That's penetrated. But this is less light than in an optical mouse. But it scatters everywhere. We designed this laser to work really well with a $1 camera chip that's shipping in all of your smartphones that sees in the infrared. And the really unusual property about it is it has pixels the size of the wavelength of light. So we can see the waves in the wavelength of light on the chip and read those waves like a sailor can read the waves on the ocean and be able to predict where the fish are or where the land is. We use math to do that. And then here, we interrogate a blood vessel. And where that light hits the blood vessels, it ricochets in a different way, creating a different pattern on the chip. We can even, even see the ba-boom of your heart. And by some measures, this is what we see on the exact camera chip, and we interpret it here. We're seeing blood flow fidelity by some measures two, with 200 times better fidelity than a multi-million dollar MRI machine or a CT machine or a Doppler ultrasound scan.
This can be a stroke detector and so much more. So great, we have these devices where we've done great results on glioblastoma, stroke, mental disease. Conventional wisdom says, pick one and chip it. That's because conventional wisdom, the drug of choice for therapeutics is a drug. And that is fraught with risk. The typical cost, we went over about $2 billion in 20 years. But here's the thing. There's two things that are different here. We're using light and sound proven safe for 100 years. And we're using chips. You can't convince a chip maker to sell a chip for a million dollars. And that's a really good thing. Moore's law rides on the fact that we make things at scale and differentiate the same chips with software and things on top of it. And so we could work on addressing all aggressive cancers, all blood diseases, all mental diseases, neurodegenerative diseases with the same kind of chipset with different software layers like we've done for the three diseases I've shared with you. So where we get to is why not just try to cure more people and more diseases faster? By the way, I didn't mention Open Water as a startup, so now we're trying to take on everything that kills you. So how does that work? Here's the other key. In the last 20 years, there's been a million papers in the scientific community about using light and sound and EEGs and so forth to diagnose and cure diseases. The, medical, the speed of research in medical is glacial, 30 years from first paper. But cl clinic, clinicians aren't really great at device physics on the cutting edge. So I constantly think about how to help more of this incredible talent. So here's an example. This is low intensity focused ultrasound for lots of diseases and the frequencies uh, Often only single frequency was tried. Why is that? Because the off-the-shelf equipment only hits a, a single frequency. That off-the-shelf equipment is a half a million dollars, a million dollars. You need a whole huge, full, huge room of them to address the sonification parameter sweeps. But we have flexible systems, and uh, we can help so many great clinicians find the effective therapies for so many diseases if we could get our components to them efficiently. So our moonshot is let's not go after one disease, let's do them all together. We've spelt, spent seven years building these chipsets and uh, the software and AI and it's time to let everybody have them. Equally important is the cost of development. 80% of the cost of bringing a new therapy to market is the clinical trials. In drugs that's a billion, in devices, it's 50 to $100 million, but that's still a lot of money. But a platform with shared data can massively save cost. We could get three to 10x lower cost structure because the regulatory bodies sharing the safety risks across the platform need fewer patients. It's an exponential. So also, we can combine the 100 years of safety data across infrared light and ultrasound to add to that mix. So we're letting everybody have access. By doing so, we get an exponential, lowering the component costs, as I've said, and the regulatory costs in an in a exponential way. Better, faster, cheaper. An open ecosystem will be a vertically integrated silo mode approach in medicine as it has in nearly every industry. Imagine it's five years from now and a new country wants to get better outcomes for their health or a hospital or pharma chain wants to accelerate their research or an AI firm needs better training data. In each case, having an open, trusted ecosystem in place will be their preferred path. At its most basic, we're using light and sound to penetrate your body and writing Moore's Law to enable better modulation here. These devices could enable a silicon hospital for use inside and outside of the hospital to everybody, everywhere, all the time, with the AI doctors that are coming 
and with the components you now know about. This also enables brain-computer interface non-invasively. We are reading and writing neurons right now in humans. That is, brain-computer interface will up the resolution that has profound implications. In terms of ethics, we're working to assure consent and mental privacy in their use. So I hope you're asking, can we have this tech? And the answer is yes, you can have this tech. Everyone can have this tech. We have some modules now. We'll have more next year that we can supply you, or we can help you make your own, whichever you prefer. We've all grown up in the semiconductor software res revolution of the last 30 years. This could be a better way to get better health care outcomes globally faster. Let's do this faster. Let's get you units for whatever diseases you want to work on. And um, let's speed up solution. And let's do it now. Thank you. الحضور الكريم يرجى البقاء في مقاعدكم